faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not yet seen Genesis 8 chapter 22 thank you Lord God for the privilege of ministering your divine word hallelujah as I plant this seed of the word let it grow 30 fold 60 fold 100 fold in their hearts and lives Blessed be your name. Praise God. Hey, I'm a farmer, amen, and I expect the seed that I sow in your heart to grow 100-fold in Jesus' name. All right. Yes. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. The Bible declares, while the earth remains, praise God, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not what? Cease, praise God. So here we see today's message as we've been speaking about biblical prosperity. I continue, but the title of the message is Sowing and Reaping. I said Sowing and Reaping, amen? Now, the Bible already establishes here that while the earth remains, seed time and harvest time. How many know the earth still remains? Does the earth exist, yes or no? It's still here, right? Are you alive in it? All right. So as long as the earth remains, the law and the principle of seed time and harvest time is in effect. God told Noah this after the flood. He told him, listen, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest time. And another thing I want to mention, between seed time and harvest time, there's what? Waiting time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because sometimes we want to plant the seed and reap the harvest on the same second that we planted the seed. But there's a waiting period. Amen. Sometimes that waiting period may be long, a while. It's up to God. God determines the seasons of when you reap the harvest. But I'm here to tell you that you can put your confidence that as long as the earth remains, which is still remaining, the law and the principle of seed time and harvest time still exists. Amen. All right, now watch this. In the New Living Translation, it says, as long as the earth remains, as long as the earth exists, there will be planting and harvest. Okay? Cold and heat, summer, and winter, day and night. So if you don't cooperate with the law of gravity, you're going to die. Because the law of gravity is an established principle. Whoever applies the law of gravity in their lives, it will work for them. So if you don't cooperate with the law of gravity, you can die. But if you cooperate with the law of gravity, you can fly. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, praise God. Now, the word sea time in the Hebrew means zara. Everyone say zara. It means sowing. So when we talk about the word sea time, it means sowing. It means uh, offspring. It means sowing time. The word harvest means what? Harvesting is the process of harvesting the seed that you sowed. So God is saying as long as the earth remains, seed time. There's going to be a time to sow. But there's going to be a time also to harvest. Hallelujah. How many like harvest in their lives? Now you can't have a harvest without sowing. They go hand in hand, sowing and reaping, seed time, harvest time. So you can have absolute confidence in this law that when you apply it into your life concerning seed time, you will experience harvest time. I mean, 100% guaranteed, amen? Now, watch this. What does the word cold mean in Hebrew? It means cold. <laughs> what does the word heat mean there? It means hot. So deep, right? What does the word sow mean? When I say sow, it means to scatter seed. So when we sow, what are we doing? We're what? Scattering what? Seed. Not chancletas. You're scattering seed. Now watch this. In Galatians 6, 7, what does the apostle Paul say there? If you can go to it quickly, I'll read it. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Because the only thing that brings faith to our hearts is the word of God. If I preach and teach the word, faith will be released. If uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Hear the apostle Paul speaking about this principle. It says in verse 7, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. What does mock mean? Fooled or, or to be fooled. God is not fooled. You can't fool God. Look at this. Whatever a man 
sows, that he will also what? Reap. There's the principle in the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Apostle Paul says, whatever a man sows, he's going to reap. So you can't expect a different harvest if you're planting a different seed. If you're planting a specific seed, that's the specific harvest you are to expect. But you can't expect a harvest from a seed that you have not planted. So if you want an apple tree, you have to plant what? If you want mango tree, you must plant what? And I have to put this one in. If you want a papaya tree... You have to sow what? Uh? Hallelujah. It can be a different, you can't put an apple seed on the ground and when the harvest comes up, you say, man, I didn't get a mango. Right? Because you put what? Apple seed. So whatever you put in the ground is what you're going to get. That's the principle. So don't be shocked when something uh, that you were not expecting comes up. If you haven't planted the seed, the right seed. Are you with me? Apple seed, apple tree. Mango tree, mango seed. Papaya tree, man, uh, papaya seed. That's the principle of life. And the Apostle Paul here is talking about not only in our lives, because this principle of seed time and harvest time is applied and applicable in every area of our lives. It's not just, just has to do with finances, which I'm about to hit now. It has to do with your life because verse uh, seven, uh, 8 says, He who sows to his what? Flesh will also what? Of the flesh reap corruption. He who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap what? Everlasting life. If you sow to the flesh, you reap of the flesh. You sow to the spirit, you reap of the spirit. Right now, you guys are sowing into your spirit man. Hallelujah. Yeah, you're sowing spiritually right now because you came to a place where we're planting spiritual seeds. So you have just invested in yourself. By coming here this afternoon, afternoon, you just made an investment. Hallelujah. You just made an investment of spiritual seed going into you so you can reach a spiritual harvest. Okay. Hallelujah. Yes, Marie. Praise God. Now, we see here, it has to do here with our lives, so, uh, sowing and reaping. But it has to do with financial giving because look at verse 6. Let him who is taught the what? The word, share in all good things with him who teaches. Hallelujah. So there is talking about bless those who are ministering to you spiritually. Bless them how? With your material blessings. It's an exchange. We sow spiritual seeds. We reap material things. Now watch this. I'm not trying to, not, not, not these gimmicks of sowing and reaping. I'm not talking about <laughs> manipulation. You know, people preach these things just to get stuff. No, no, I'm not, I'm not interested in that. What I'm saying is the apostle Paul is laying out the principle. If you've been blessed spiritually in your life, there are people in this ministry who, are, who sow into this ministry. There are other ministries. Look how good your pastor is. There are other ministries that have blessed your life. And you have not sowed the seed over there. You have not blessed them with anything. And you've been hearing them for maybe two, three years, four years, five years, ten years. I don't know. There are some preachers out there that you have watched on television that has blessed you spiritually. But you never have sown a seed into their ministry. So this afternoon, I encourage you. So, if you have been taught the word from them and have grown spiritually, sow into their ministries. Hello? So an offering. Say, man, you know what? This ministry has blessed my life, but I have never given anything. Send them something because you have been blessed spiritually. Bless them financially. Amen? So they can continue blessing others like you have been blessed. And God's people say, see, I'm not taking an offering for fire at the altar. <laughs> this is for other ministries. They should be thanking me. Amen? And watch this. Because God is my source. Hallelujah. God is my supply. Hallelujah. I look to the Lord, and then he sends the ravens. Now, watch this. So that's the principle. So if you don't like what you are reaping, you have to change what you are sowing. Amen? You want me to say it again? If you don't like what you're reaping, then you have to change what you're sowing. Your future is in your hands. It's that simple. Your future is in your hands, not in someone else's hands. It's in your hands because you are a sower. 
All of us in here are sowers in our lives. Farmers. We plant. Every day you and I are planting something. Every single day. And if you don't like the harvest that you're seeing, don't say, look at my life is terrible. Look, what I, look at the kind of life that I'm living. Look at this plant. It's ugly. <laughs> Change what you put in the ground. Change what you put in the ground. You're going to get something different. Amen? So your future is in your hands. Say, my future is in my hands. Not in no one's hands. In my hands. And I know this, the, I, you guys know what I mean. I mean. God holds our future. You guys know that. But what I'm saying is, God has your future, but you have the seed in your hand. Who plants? You do. God doesn't plant for you. You have the responsibility of planting. That's why Paul said, you sow. If you sow in the spirit, you reap of the spirit. Who you think prays in the morning? God or you? You. Who you think reads the Bible? God or you? You. You're the one that has to read the Bible. You're the one that has to pray. You're the one that has to gather in fellowship on Sunday services. You have to do that part. You are the one that does the reaping in that area. Now, let's continue. You have in you the power of multiplication. Hallelujah. Say, I have in me the power of multiplication. When God created Adam, Adam was already grown, a full grown man. You know that Adam didn't go through the baby stage like you and I did? I'm going I'm I'm to I'm show you something right now that, was, that I heard that was awesome. Adam didn't go through the baby stage like you and I did. When God created Adam, he was a full grown man. And he gave him a full grown woman. That's why he said, whoa, man, what is that? Woman. Whoa, man. Okay, remember that. <laughs> Adam was a created a full grown man. And Eve was a full grown woman. He never went through the baby stage. Jesus, you know, Jesus came to identify with us, right? Fully, 100%. He became a baby just like you and I. So in reality, you and I can identify more with Jesus than we did with Adam. Hallelujah. Adam didn't go through the baby stage, child stage, teenage stage. He was an adult already from the beginning. But Jesus went through the, all the stages. Hallelujah. Every single stage, he went through it like you and I. So if we want to identify, let's identify with the last Adam, which is Jesus. Amen? Because the first Adam doesn't know what it is to be a baby being changed. Your pampers being changed. Jesus' pampers were changed. I know they didn't have pampers back then. You know what I mean? They said, man, pampers have been, a long, been around that long? No, you know what I'm saying. Hallelujah. You and I have the power of multiplication. When God created Adam in him, he already had the seed in him to be fruitful and multiply. It was already in him. It wasn't coming from the outside. God created him with the seed on the inside of him. He had the power of multiplication on the inside of him. You and I spiritually, we have the power of multiplication on the inside of us. The seed of the word is already inside of us. The glory of God is already inside of us at seed form. You can cause that seed to grow and multiply in your life. Now, you are a household of seeds. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Genesis chapter 1 verse 11. How many are enjoying this so far? Okay, it's going to get better now. Amen. In Genesis chapter 1, this is what it's all about, people of God. Thank you, Lord. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind. Whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. Verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass. The herb, or the grass, 
that yields seed according to its kind. And the tree that yields fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So here we see the principle that the seed is in itself according to its kind. Each seed produces according to its kind. That's the, that's, that's the, uh, the principle. So the, the specific tree you have is the seed you have sown. That's what I just said. The seed that you sow is the tree that will grow. Hallelujah. Seeds produce after its kind. The apple seed. Inside of that seed is the harvest already. Amen. Inside that seed, the harvest is in it already. It has the power of multiplication on the inside of it. God has placed that power on the inside of that seed. Don't ever neglect the power of the seed. Don't ever despise the power of the seed. I felt the anointing with that. The seed has power to multiply. Nothing can stop that seed from exploding and growing and multiplying. Nothing can stop it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because why? God has created it to multiply. And you and I have been created to multiply. Amen. To increase in every area of our lives. Now watch this. So example, apple seed, apple tree. Mango seed, mango tree. Papaya seed, papaya tree. Bring me that papaya next week. <laughs> man's seed will produce what? A man. When Adam and Eve came together, what did they produce? A monkey? A man. Because the principle is that the seed can only produce after its own kind. Hello? Only after its own kind. So this thing of evolution is nuts. He's a gorilla forever, not a man. Are you with me? Man was created totally different. Man is made in the image of God. Creatures are not, even though some people love their dogs more than they love people. But the dog is a dog. He's a creature. He's not made in the image of God. No matter how good Julio is. What's his name, the dog, Julio? No matter how much you love that Julio, he's still a creature only. Now, you're in a different class. You know that your class, the class that you're in is even higher than angels. Do you know that? You know that, right? Angels were not created in the image of God. We were. Hallelujah. Only we are made in God's image and likeness. They're made in the image but not the likeness. We have both image and likeness. Only man has that privilege. We're the highest class in all the universe. Are you with me? So don't downgrade yourself. You're in God's class. Top class. Hallelujah. That was what was written in our car when we got married, when I came out in that. What was the car again? You like saying Rolls Royce, huh? The Ro it said top class. Now, anyway. So man's seed, Adam's seed, which had the power of multiplication when he got together with Eve. That's why God said be fruitful and multiply. Had the power to multiply, right? But to produce the seed according to his kind, according to how he was. An animal seed produces an animal because it's according to its kind. All right. There's different types of seed in the Bible. Okay. I'm, I, I, there's four different types of seeds. And I'm not talking about apple seed, mango tree. I'm not talking about those seeds. That's, that's in the fruit category. Correct. There's the seed of a fruit tree. Right. Where you have apples, papaya, mangoes. But there's the seed of the fruit tree that the Bible talks about. There's the seed of a man. Right? When a man gets with a woman, he plans to see where? In her womb. To produce what? Descendants, his posterity. Then there's the seed of the word. The Bible talks about the seed of the word of God. It mentions the word of God as seed. Then it also mentions seed as money. Seed is money, right? So those four different types, in those different, four different types of ways, God uses the word seed. To represent what? A tree, a fruit tree. To represent descendants, the seed of a man. To represent the word and to represent your financial giving. It's called the seed. Now, 
If you plant seed, the seed of, 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 of a fruit in the soil of the earth is going to produce the tree. If you plant the seed of man in the womb of the woman, you're going to have a child. If you plant the seed of the word in the heart of man, it's going to reap what? Salvation. And if you plant the financial seed into the kingdom of God, you're going to be blessed financially. Hallelujah. So you see, in these four different ways you plant seed for, uh, of the fruit tree, you plant it on the ground, you get a tree. The man lays with his wife, plants the seed in the womb. The soil is her womb, baby. Same thing with the word of God. We preach the word, we sow the word in the hearts of people. Wow, we're going to reap salvation in that heart, in that individual. And financial seed, you put your seed into the kingdom of God. Financial harvest from that seed when you plant it into the kingdom of God. Because really, like we said before, when you bring your finances to the Lord, you're really bringing it to Jesus. You're bringing it into his hands. And not only does your seed have the power of multiplication, it's going into the hands of the one who created all things and created the law of seed time and harvest time. So once it goes into his hand, it multiplies. Remember when the young boy, there was 5,000 people there, 5,000 men. And they said, uh, they told Jesus, feed, Jesus said, why don't you feed them to the disciples? He said, Lord, we don't have enough to feed. He said, there's a boy here with five fishes, five breads and two fishes. Jesus took the boy's lunch. Hello? Yeah, can, Jesus took the boy's lunch. But he used the boy's lunch as seed. And the Bible says after everyone ate and they were full, there was 12 baskets left over. Where you think those 12 baskets, who took those 12 baskets home? Yeah. Because the boy said, uh, Jesus, where's my five bread too? Oh, man, here's 12 baskets. Why? He planted that seed. He gave it into the work of the kingdom and it was multiplied. And God's people said, Amen. all right, now. So in order to have a financial harvest, you have to sow a financial seed. You receive financial miracles as you sow a financial seed. So each seed produces according to its kind and creates breakthrough according to what you're planting. Are you with me? So this is the principles of the kingdom of God. This is not some gimmick, you know, like people use it as a gimmick to get people's money. No, no, no. This is the principles of the kingdom. Are you with me? Are you guys understanding? These are the laws of the kingdom. Not the laws of a denomination. The laws of the kingdom of God. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. You know, a lot of people say, oh, that's the prosperity gospel. Well, you can call it whatever you want to call it. I'm telling you, these are the laws of the kingdom. They are kingdom principles that God has already established and put in place in the kingdom of God. And you can't have breakthrough in your life without applying these principles. We're kingdom citizens. We belong to a kingdom. And we have to think as citizens of the kingdom. And act and do as citizens of this kingdom. But I have to find out once I'm born again, what are the principles of the kingdom? What are the laws that govern that kingdom? Every country has laws that govern that country. What is the laws of the kingdom of God? So I can begin to obey and reap the benefits of those laws. And God's people said, all right. Now, we see in Genesis chapter 47. Are you guys enjoying this? All right. In Genesis chapter 47, you guys know the story of Joseph without me going into it. You know, Joseph was promoted. He's second in command. You have Pharaoh and then you have Joseph ruling the land. You know, there was famine in the land. You know the prophecies, the prophetic dreams that King Nebuchadnezzar had. God can give prophetic dreams even to unbelievers. But, he'll, he, but they won't get the interpretation unless they go seek a man of God. Hallelujah. So here we see that God revealed to Nebuchadnezzar seven years of prosperity, seven years of famine. So now in Genesis 47, they, the food was running out. The money was running out. People from Egypt began, first of all, they were paying Joseph. Right? To get bread. But then they ran out of money because the famine was very severe. So now they started selling their cattle. And after they sold their cattle for bread, now they got no money and no cattle. What's left? Only the land and their lives. And they come up, come up to Joseph and say, Joseph, we ain't got no more money. 
We ain't got no more animals. Here's our lives and here's our land. And Joseph said, come. And he took them as slaves, basically, for Pharaoh. And it says in verse 19, look at this. This is powerful. Why should we die? Genesis 47, verse 19. Why should we die before your eyes? Both we and our land. Buy us and our land for what? For bread. And we and our land will be servants of Pharaoh. Watch this. This is the powerful one right here. Give us what? Give us what? Give us what? Give us seed that we may live and not die. That the land may not be desolate. Wow. Stop there. These people lost everything, Johnny. But the only thing they say is, we lost everything, but just give us seed and we'll live. As long as we have seed to sow, our life will continue. Are you with me? Yeah, come on. That was a good place to give God praise. You can lose everything as long as you have seed to sow, brother. You can change your future. Hallelujah. Yeah, they didn't say, give me the animals back. No, no, just give me seed. You say, I lost everything. What do you have? Seed. You become like the Zarephath, the widow of Zarephath with the prophet Elijah. Where she said, I don't have nothing but a little flour and a little oil. That's all you need. That was your seed. Bring it here to me. Remember Elijah the prophet. She said, I'm baking, the, my, you know, I'm, I'm making this pancake for me and my son to eat and die. He said, woman, give it to me first. Give it to the Lord first. Put it in the hands of the kingdom. Put it in the hands of the anointing. And watch that seed multiply. Watch that oil and flour multiply when you sow it in the ground where the anointing is. Because the anointing is the power of God. And wherever the power of God is, there's multiplication and increase in that place. Hallelujah. Wherever the anointing is, there's the power of multiplication and increase. That's why it's important that you sow into the kingdom. Because in the kingdom, the anointing is there. If you sow it in a place where there's no anointing, there's no power of multiplication in that place. Even though it might be a good charitable work, there's no anointing there. Not all things are anointed. Things that are anointed are only where God has his hand on. That's where the anointing is. So, Elijah takes it. He says, thus says the Lord, woman, you're not going to run out of oil and you're not going to run out of dough until rain comes. So that woman, that flour kept multiplying, that oil kept multiplying. She kept making pancakes every day until it began to rain. So she was sustained until the drought ended. And once the drought ended, the supernatural stopped and now she was able to feed naturally like we should, you know, on a regular daily basis. Are you with me? These people said, give us seed that we may live. All you need is seed to change your future. That's all you need because your harvest is in the seed. That's all you need. Many people say, I need this. I need No, no, you only need seed. As long as you need seed, you can change your financial future. You can change your life. Give us seed that we may live. He didn't say, give me cattle, give me my land back. No, give me seed. And God supplies seed to the sower. And as long as God continues to supply seed to the sower, you have the, the power for breakthrough in your life. You are able to sow that seed and live. Amen? Now, watch this. I'm not done with this one. Verse 23. Then Joseph said to the people, Indeed, I have brought, bought, you, brought, bought you and your land this day for Pharaoh. Look. Here is seed for you, and you shall sow the land. So Joseph gives him the seed. Now watch this, verse 24. And it, it shall come to pass in the harvest that you shall give what? One-fifth to Pharaoh. Four-fifth shall be your own. As seed for the field and for your food. For those of your household and as food for your little ones. So he's telling him here, one-fifth belongs to Pharaoh. One-fifth is 20%. Am I right, Johnny? Ain't you a mathematician or something? One, one fifth, he's an engineer, my fault. One fifth is 20%. Joseph is saying, okay, when, here's the seed that you may live. Harvest came. Now bring one fifth to Pharaoh. 
if Pharaoh is able to get 20%, and we end there. <laughs> if we bring 20% to Pharaoh, and the Lord's just asking for the tithe, which is 10%, is the Lord asking too much or not? Pharaoh is getting 20%. If Capital One, Disney, American Express, and all your cards are asking you for 23, 24, 27%, what is it when you give God 10%? How much more should you give God? Are you with me? Or when the IRS comes around. Yeah. Jonathan works for the IRS, guys. That is Matthew, the tax collector, right there. <laughs> but look what Jesus did with Matthew, the tax collector. He made him a fisher of men, amen? He was, he was busy fishing the taxes, but then said, no, that's it. Leave that alone. 20% to Pharaoh, and we, we're crying about giving 10% to the Lord. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. We have to finish. And I finish with it. I have more, I have more seed to give you, but I, I have to stop. Next Sunday. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, and we end with this. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Hallelujah. It says, cast your bread upon, oh, 11 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1. Cast your bread. Hallelujah. That's after the book of Proverbs, guys. Psalms, Proverbs, and then Ecclesiastes. Hallelujah. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after what? Many days. Give a serving to seven and also to eight, for you do not know what evil will be on the earth. Stop there. In the New Living Translation, it says, verse 1 says, Divide your investments among many places, for you do not know what risk might lie ahead. In the other translation, contemporary English translation says, Share what you have with seven or eight others, because you never know when disaster may strike. Okay, what is, it, what is the Bible telling us? What is the Lord telling us? The Lord is telling us to give. Seven, eight, continue giving. Why? Because you don't know the evil that's about to hit the earth. You don't know the financial crisis that's going to hit the planet or hit the United States. And the only protection that we have is our giving. Are you with me? Listen, you have Jesus. I, I'm not talking about, you know that. The law is our protection. But once you're in the law, walking in the law, what is it that's going to keep you protected? The, besides the blood of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, the angels, is following the principles of the kingdom. And there it says give. Give because you don't know the evil. You don't know what evil is going to come upon the earth. So your financial seed protects your future. When you sow your seed, you protect your future. Because you can make a demand. When disaster hits, you say, Lord, I've been sowing into your work. And you said, Lord, seed time and harvest time. You said that you will rebuke the devourer. You have a right to take claim of the covenant. When you work walking in the covenant, say, I'm a covenant man. Yeah, a woman. You're a covenant person. And as covenant people, you have covenant rights. There you can say, Lord, I have obeyed your word. I lost everything, but I know I have seed on the ground. And I command and I prophesy to that seed to come forth in Jesus' name. You speak to your seed. Not only sow your seed, speak to your seed. Say, seed come forth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You have that right. You have the right not only to plant, but to speak in command. How did God create the heavens and the earth? By speaking, by declaring, by prophesying. So you and I must do the same thing, prophesy to the seed. He said, I haven't seen no harvest, but I know my seed is in the ground. I have sown seed at fire at the altar, and I have sown seed at fire global, which is the work of God where the anointing is. And Lord, I pray... That they reap a hundredfold. Lord, I pray that I reap 100-fold from the seed that has been sown. You can make demand on the seed. You're not making demand on God and twisting God's arm. You're just saying what God already has established. You said seed time and harvest time, Lord. And I planted my seed and I expect the harvest. Period. Hallelujah. But that's why when you give, you give in faith. If you give in fear, forget about it. Nothing works with faith, without, with, without faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. Everything you and I must do, must do by faith. Peter walked on water by faith. 
And he began to sink by fear. Did you get that? He walked on water by faith and sank by fear. He was doing all right as long as he walked in faith. But when the wind blew and he started looking with his natural eyes, he began to sink. And Jesus said, why did you doubt? Jesus caught him sinking. Before Peter sank, his, before his physical body sank, his faith sank. Hello? Did you get that? Before you sink physically, your faith sinks. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. I know you want to go home now. Verse 4. He who observes the wind will not what? Will not sow. That's verse 4. He who regards the clouds will not reap. That's powerful. It's saying there that the person who observes the wind is not going to plant seed. The person who sees trials and tribulations hitting them is going to stop planting if you observe the wind. If your eyes observe the Lord, you plant no matter what's going on around you. But if you're moving in fear and you're looking at the wind... Like Peter was doing okay on the water, but the moment he saw the wind boisterous, the Bible says, it was blowing. He put too much attention on the wind instead of on God who controls the wind. It began to sink. He who observes the wind, man, I can't sow now. I ain't got money to sow now. I can't do that. I have to pay for this. I have to pay for that. Well, you're observing the wind. He said, well, I can't get, well, you're observing the wind. Observe God. And when you observe God, you know that your life is in that seed. You know that your breakthrough is in that seed. You cannot eat your seed. You have to plant your seed. Hello. If you eat your seed, you ain't going to reap nothing. If you plant it, harvest. Are you with me? That's why we, we, we tied in this ministry. The ministry tithes. Not only me personally, her person. The ministry tied. Everything that comes in, we tied. Yeah, because we believe in not eating the seed. We believe in giving the seed so we can keep continue reaping harvest here. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus, he who observes the wind, stop observing the wind. Stop observing problems. Stop observing what's going on. Stop observing the stock market. Stop observing whatever you're looking at. There's only one thing you and I are supposed to look at, and that's Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. That's what the Bible says. The moment your faith sinks is because you begin looking at the wind. Your, your faith, my faith sinks when we look at the wind. We look at the Lord, we stay afloat. Peter was doing great. He was doing something supernatural, walking on water, while the other apostles were sitting on that boat saying, well, look at Peter go. Wow, look at Peter. He's walking on water. We thought only Jesus can do that. We didn't think we can do it, but Jesus always challenges you, challenges you to do what he does. Jesus never said, I, I can, only I can do it. You can't do what I do. No, Jesus challenged you. You can do what I do. He who believes in me, the works that I do, you shall do. And greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. <laughs> Jesus is always challenging you and I to move up, to come up. Oh, that's Jesus. Only Jesus can heal the blind. Only Jesus can heal the deaf. Only Jesus can raise the dead. And Jesus said, that's why I came to live on the inside of you, so I can do it through you. Jesus' ministry did not stop 2,000 years ago. It continued after the Holy Spirit came to live on the inside of every believer. Because Jesus is the Holy Spirit in the, in the, in the hearts of the God's people. You know, like they say, like pastor said, the Holy Spirit is Jesus unlimited. Hallelujah. Yeah, say the Holy Spirit is Jesus unlimited. Because when Jesus was alive physically, he can only be at one place at one time. But the Holy Spirit is, is in every place at the same time. He's omniscient, omnipresent. Jesus had to ride the donkey. Jesus had to walk to houses. and Holy Spirit don't have to do no walking. He's there. Inside every believer. Can I finish? Verse 5. As you do not know what is the way of the wind. Or how the bones grow in the womb. 
of her who is with child. How many know how the bones grow in the womb? I mean, I know you go to medical school and you read a little bit how, but do they really know how that works? Isn't that, they, they could put a little knowledge to it. But we don't know. How can you, how can that tree, a little seed like that produce that tree? Oh, this is the process. I know you know the process, but you really don't know how that really happens. <laughs> Are you with me? How can I produce a child? Oh, you come together. I know that, but that's a miracle. Yeah, we do explain the process, but that's, that's miraculous. That's like beyond our mind. That's what he's saying here. We don't know the way of the wind. We don't know how bones grow. So we don't know the works of God who makes everything. He's trying to say, listen, we don't understand fully the power of the seed. All we know is that it works. So let's cooperate with it. Let's cooperate with it. I don't understand the law of gravity, but I know if we cooperate with it, we can fly. We can go to Puerto Rico. We can go to Brazil. We can go to South America, Central America. Are you with me? You ever sit on a plane and be like, man, how this thing really flies? <laughs> right? <laughs> how does it really fly? I mean, right? It's amazing. Oh, this and this. Ah, you don't know nothing. We cooperate. <laughs> She's laughing. We cooperate. <laughs> we cooperate with the law of gravity. Cooperate with the principles of the kingdom. And watch what happens. If you don't cooperate with the principles of the kingdom, the laws of the kingdom, it's like you going against gravity. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. Find out how it works and flow with it. Hallelujah. Find out how it works and flow with it. That's it. Now watch this. So we don't know. In the morning, verse 6, sow your why. And in the evening, do not withhold your hand. So in the morning means good times. In the evening means bad times. Because day, morning speaks of day, speaks of light. Evening speaks of night, dark times. In the morning, in the good time, plant your seed. Give in good times. In the bad times, keep giving. And it says, why are you going to keep doing that? Because look what it says there. For you don't know which will prosper. I don't know which seed is going to cause a trigger my harvest. I'm not sure which one. All I know, let me keep planting in the morning, keep planting in the evening. In the good times and the bad times. One of those seeds is going to trigger prosperity. One of those seeds is going to trigger financial blessings. I don't know which one. My job is to plant. Let God take care of, the, of, of that business. You see, sometimes we want to play God. No, no, no. Let God be God. Hallelujah. Let God be God. You just do your part. Obey. In the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, do not withhold your hand. For you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Let's all stand up. I don't know which seed is going to produce and trigger my harvest. I'm not sure which one, so what I'm going to do, give a portion to seven, give a portion to eight. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 1. I'm going to keep sowing and sowing and sowing, and I am not going to observe the wind. Hello? I'm not going to look at the circumstances before I sow. I'm just going to sow. When God leads you and directs you, you just do it. You say, but I, don't, I need it, Lord. The Lord said, plant that seed, but I need the seed. Are you going to eat the seed? Or you're going to plant the seed. If you eat the seed, you just lost your harvest. If you plant the seed under God's instructions, harvest. Harvest. The Bible says Isaac sowed in famine. When it wasn't right condition, right soil, right time to sow, he sowed in famine. He didn't sow when everything looked good. He sowed in bad times. Yo, guys, people were dying of, of hunger. And he sowed the seed and produced 100-fold that same year. 